beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Minds. Welcome. My name is Abel Kat of Beauty and Great to have you here. Um, we'll have an interesting show for you today. It's been an interesting week, of course, uh, that just passed. And I, like I always say on the show, a week in Nigeria is almost a lifetime anywhere else. So much has happened in the past week. Um, Edo State has been in the news in particular with regards to the postponement of the governorship elections. There has been quite controversial. Um, members of the opposition party, the PDP, have cried foul, wondering why that would have happened, especially since the last time we had the federal elections last year when elections were postponed, uh, the ruling party now did cry out for the same reason. So it's people are starting to wonder what the situation is and why that would be the case this time and why it should be valid. But it's been moved by two weeks and um, the Edo governorship elections will be holding at the end of this month. Um, hopefully it still holds and holds peacefully and, and we do have a, a new governor there. Debates were also held there last Sunday and of course it was brought to you live on Channels Television and it was quite interesting to see how the candidates did, did battle out um, uh, their opinions, their ideas and what they have planned for a dose state. Um, but besides elections, of course, Chibok has been in the news again for some of the most wrong, re one of the wrongest reasons, actually. Um, um, we did hear from the government, uh, especially the police, uh, calling out uh, the protesters, saying that they were becoming a problem, you know, to, to the community, especially in Abuja, where they have staged a protest for the last two years, calling for the girls who were abducted to come back. So there's been a back and forth between the government, or at least security agencies, and members of the Bimba Car Girls, um, um, organization, a movement, uh, if I may use those words. Um, but we're going to get into all of that, of course, as the show progresses much later. I'm um, also talking about the Paralympics, where Nigeria is finally winning medals. I know Nigerians are excited. Uh, the, the Olympics didn't go very well for us, so it's good to see that we've, we've won four. I think one is on the way right now. I know there's another weightlifting competition or paralifting competition going on uh, right now, so maybe we might have five uh, in the next hour. So it's, it's exciting news from that front. But we're going to be starting off with, with a special guest here who... Um, is better placed doing what I am doing right now. She's an interviewer. Uh, she is a broadcaster uh, with CNN, and uh, but she's going to be interviewed today. <laughs> Katura King, hello, host of CNN's African Voices. Yes, indeed. Thanks for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Right, let's just start with Nigeria now before we go into you and I talked about all, all of the elections and all of that. I don't know if you're you've been following closely, but oh, um, yes, what, what are your thoughts? And you know, we've had so many elections that have been um, inconclusive. Virtually every election that's held since this government came into power has been inconclusive and people are starting to be worried, you know, what would happen in 2019? And we've seen a movement now of, of an election date again. Are you worried? Um, I'm not sure if worried is the right word to use for me per se, because prior to joining CNN, I was working with the Rise TV and the last thing I did with them was actually the presidential campaign, um, the presidential campaign rather yeah. <laughs> and um, I was on the APC side and I so I saw everything happen firsthand and when people when you have the media stating you know this has been delayed from the date till the end of May um, you've got a lot of people complaining and worrying what exactly is going on but once you're inside you realize it's not actually as bad as it's being made out to be in the in, in the publicity or in the media so I'm not worried but I do hope that they get it together soon yeah because it's, become, it's becoming like the norm as yes. against the exception yeah you know? so exactly. people are starting to wonder what would happen with that but thank Thanks for being here today. Um, I want to start with your name now because people have wondered a lot. Where are you from? I mean, are you Nigerian? Is, I am. Uh, where, Ketura King. Explain so, that. So, okay. I am it's so long and convoluted. How much time do you have? No. Um, so, Ketura is a biblical name. It's Hebrew. It's okay. in the Bible. Genesis 25. And Ketura was actually Abraham's second wife. Now, I was given that name because my mother is a hippie. <laughs> She's part Nigerian, part Caribbean. My father okay. is Caribbean. Um, sorry, my father's Nigerian, rather. Okay. Um, so, that is where my name is from. But uh -huh. I am Nigerian. I'm from Lagos State. Oh, so I'm a and I speak Yoruba, so I'm very Nigerian. <laughs> okay, so let's we've we'll rested that case, because so nobody else claims you. Exactly, I'm Nigerian. <laughs> but you get that question a lot, don't you? I do, and I people say I don't look Nigerian, but then I say, what does the Nigerian look like? It's such a huge country. We have over 250 cultures, ethnicities. What is the Nigerian look? You don't have a Nigerian look. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I love this country. I'm probably going to be here till I die. <laughs> Great stuff. But did you school here? What was growing no. up like for you? Um, so I was born and raised in England up until the age of 12 and my parents worked with the United Nations so from 12 we started living the nomadic life of traveling everywhere I've lived in about 16 countries or so till date um, I went to school briefly here in secondary school I went to Vivian Fowler for about a year or so um, I've had a year in so many different schools six months here I was homeschooled for about three weeks because there wasn't enough time in the country to go to school uh, so I've only been here once before but I love it 
So when did you move back officially? I moved January 2014. Okay. Why did you move back? Was it the CNN job or was it a rise? No, it was a rise. Okay. And I didn't even move back technically. I came here to cover the Lagos countdown because a rise sends um, a reporter or correspondent to a different country in the world to cover the New Year's uh, celebrations. So that's what I was doing for Nigeria. And then I fell in love with the country. So I stayed for a little bit and I was doing some work out here for a rise, covering the fashion shows and all the numerous events that we have here every day. And then the presidential elections came about. And because I had previously worked in front of the camera, I decided to try my hand at working behind the camera. Okay. So I started producing the presidential elections, um, or the output rather for that. And that was amazing. It gave me fantastic, you know, informa inside information into how production works. Yeah. And, uh, and then, I mean, I'd been in talks with CNN for about six to eight months prior to that. So they wanted to move me to Kenya. But I found a man. <laughs> <laughs> I fell in love. Okay. <laughs> and I asked me to move to Nigeria <laughs> instead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's how I came, came to be Okay, there. so you work from here with, with CNN. Yes. And you do African voices. But, of course, you, you still do travel around doing interviews yes, and all of I that. Yes, I have. Um, so a lot of people, for some reason, seem to think that I am contracted to one company. I'm actually freelance. Freelance, okay. So I have a studio in my house, which I built, just in order to make sure that it's easier for me to do any job that I need to do. Um, so, yes, I'm available for work. <laughs> Great stuff. But before, before we move on now with your work, you said you lived in about 16 countries yes. growing up. Was that a good thing for you? Did you think it helped you? I mean, mm. I, I know people who have had the diplomatic life as well, like yeah. you did. Some have complained that I never had any friends. It's also affected them post, yeah. you know, them living their own life now where there's no sort of attachment to anywhere in particular and they're constantly restless. So are you also that way? Do you yeah, think you're, you're here for good? Right are you already myself. tired already? Um, I, I, you definitely have friends that are like me because that's, <laughs> you take the words right out of my mouth. Um, so it's a good thing and a bad thing. It's like a double-edged sword. It's good in that, you know, I guess I got all the jobs that I have had because of my exposure, if you will, and the fact that I pick up languages so easily and I assimilate cultures. That's all as a result of the way I was brought up. But then it's bad because I'm such a transient character that I don't think I'm even able to have... If you can find a friend that I've had for longer than 10 years, then you know that they are my real friend. Because or maybe they, just family. <laughs> or family, exactly, because they've chosen to stay in touch with me. I'm really bad at keeping in touch. And, um, yeah, I would agree definitely with yeah. your friends. It's, it's pretty hard sometimes. People think that you're closed off and you're not that open a person, but it's sort of like that's how I've grown up. That's all I've known is to just be a bit guarded because you yeah. never know when you're going to leave. You might be leaving in two weeks. You might be leaving in two days. Um, so, yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> so does that help you now? I, I, right now, are you... Do you, do you get very restless often or are yes. you committed to staying in places now or are you still very restless? I'm trying <laughs> to teach myself to stay in a place for longer than a hot minute. Yeah. Um, I have what I call it, itchy feet and every time I come back from a holiday to whatever country it is I've chosen to move to at that time, I have sand in my shoes because I'm always wanting to not necessarily move on to the next thing, but I always just want to see what's out there. When I was younger, I remember people asking what I wanted to be when I grew up, and my answer still till today hasn't changed. My answer is everything. I want to be everything. I want to do everything. I want to see everything. That's interesting. And I don't think it's impossible. That's very interesting. How many languages do you speak? Uh, four fluently and about eight years. What are you for? Uh, English. <laughs> <laughs> You're about French and Japanese. Wow. <laughs> I love Japan so much. I'm, I'm obsessed <laughs> with Japan. It was my second degree, actually. I learned Japanese culture okay. and language. Um, learning the language is pretty hard because they have over three alphabets um, at the same time concurrently. But it's such a phenomenal place. Yeah. I mean, the food and the culture, the fashion, it's exceptional. The fashion is definitely great. But back to your job now. Um, you, you host African Voices, of course, we, amongst other things that, that you do as well. What, getting that job, for, for, for starters, how did you feel? Because I know many people who, when they heard, oh, a Nigerian is doing this. <laughs> I should have applied then. Most people didn't even know there was an opening. Yeah. Or How did you get the job? And how has it been doing that? Um, I think most people didn't know that there was an opening because it, I, don't, I don't believe it was ever publicly announced. Yeah. Um, so they had a very clear definition or clear-cut idea of who they wanted to present the show or what sort of person they wanted to present the show. African Voices used to be, it was um, the old format was one personality talking to the camera for about 30 minutes and it was 
not as dynamic as it is now. So it's or been split into, yeah. exactly. It's been split into three segments, and we focus now on uh, youth and you know up and coming trendsetters. So it's a lot more fun, and they wanted a host who would reflect that. So I guess because I'm naturally gregarious and uh, <laughs> bubbly by nature, <laughs> I fit in perfectly. And um, to answer your pr primary question, I was headhunted from Arise actually. Okay. So they knew they were looking for uh, an African to present it, a young African, and they wanted a female because previously on Inside Africa there had been a male presenting it. Um, and uh, yeah, I went for a few interviews around the world with a few important people and I got the job. Has it been worth it? Yeah. Absolutely. I think every single thing that I've done in my life has been worth it. It may not necessarily seem that way at that time. You know, you go through good things, you go through bad things, but it's all been worth it. Yeah. Great stuff. Um, you did say you would, a man made you come here, so I want to go back to that now, because <laughs> I don't think I forgot that. Uh-oh. I was going to leave the personal <laughs> parts of the questions for later. We can go personal, just not too personal. Yeah, so how did that happen? Who is this man and that made you, you know, your, your life suddenly take a turn? <laughs> um, so he is a very special individual. Okay. And um, we won't be revealing any names, but I'm sure those that follow me on social media see him all the time. <laughs> he is also my personal photographer and personal stylist, okay. so it works out pretty well. What's your Instagram? <laughs> so that we can go find him. <laughs> Katura underscore king. Okay. <laughs> So are you in a relationship, dating, I am. engaged, married? I'm in a relationship. Okay. Walking towards whatever Working else. Walking towards wherever God takes me. Okay. How long has this been for? Two years. Oh, you met him in Lagos when yes, you moved here. Yes, right, like a week after I moved here. Great stuff. Great How stuff. amazing. How has it been with him? <laughs> Super. Does, has it affected your job in any way? I mean, it made you stay here, of course, but, you know, it's something we hear about a lot, especially in entertainment. You are more in media than entertainment, mm -hmm. but I hear a lot in entertainment where people say relationships sometimes maybe slow you down or distract you from work. Has that been the case with you? Not at all. Um, he is, I think I could say without a sh shadow of a doubt, my biggest fan and my biggest motivator. So certain things that, certain jobs that I may not necessarily even want to take between he and my agent, they collude together <laughs> to make me go for it. So no, he has been the best thing ever. Are, are you worried at all about that you're public with it? Because there are people who always wonder, mm, maybe I should keep this, I mean, let me do my job and yeah. let my job be what people see. Yeah. Does it ever bother you that you maybe... No, only because it's, it's a faction of who I am. So I... I'm, I can be, like I said previously, I can be very closed off and I'm trying to not necessarily invite the public into my personal life, but just let people know. You know, people learn from your struggles and they learn from everything that you go through. If I start keeping certain parts private, they may, someone looking up to me may not necessarily know that they can overcome the hurdles that they may be facing as well. My life hasn't been perfect by any means, yeah. you know. It might look that way, but it hasn't been at all. So I think I'm just trying to reveal enough to let people know that I'm available, you know, like as an agony aunt sort of thing, you know, <laughs> just know that everything is possible. Would you ever propose? Would I propose? No. I'm rather traditional. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. All the 16 <laughs> countries didn't teach you that part. No, no, no. I think no matter what, at the end of the day, an African is still an African. Me propose? <laughs> <laughs> Why though? Why, what, what would that do? I mean, I thought, I mean, we're, we're in an age where we're talking more about equality and all yeah. of that. Well, I, I believe in equality to a certain extent. I mean, I like paying for some of the bills when we go out for dinner. Yeah. I, think, I think that's good equality. Well, the traditional part has to stay traditional. Yeah, I want to be wooed. We'll take a break now, and when we come back, we'll find out more about all of the things you have planned in the future. And, of course, we can't forget Senegal. I think oh. it was Senegal where you had the incidents that, yes, that, that they took over social media and went viral. So we'll take a break, and I'll be right back. Please stay with us.